Do you think 2,000 years from now there will be religion? I used to think in the 1960s we wouldn't be religious now. So, uh, you know, what is true is that religion meets some human needs. Definitely. And, and community needs, needs for the tribe, um, ne needs to feel, feel purpose. We, we, we undoubtedly, uh, evolutionarily, have a, a teleology, as people would say, that we, we need to find purpose in things. And, and it's not, I've, I've talked about this before, but it's not me, but there, there are obviously evolutionary reasons for that. If you're in the savanna in Africa and the trees are rustling, you can assume it's, there's nothing behind to do with it, or you can assume there's some purpose, like that maybe there's a, there's a lion. And the people who, who assumed there was nothing there, they never lived long enough to, to procreate. And so the, assuming, looking for purpose is, is definitely something that we're hardwired to do by our, by our, by our evolutionary background. And, but also feeling community and, may, and a natural kind of xenophobia. My Origins Project once ran a big meeting on xenophobia. Us versus them has helped in tribes and you can see it in, 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 in chimpanzees. And, and, and so there's lots of things religion does that meet basic human needs. And Gives so the question morality is- morality as well that's kind of pre-written. Religion, as I say, is usurped morality. I, right. think, I think the argument that religion is responsible for morality is just ludicrous. But the people in that response for the Church of England said, I, I, I want to be a good person. Yeah, that, that's because that, the, the church has done such, such right. a great job. They've done, we have 2,000 years of great press agents to convince people that right. if they don't accept that they are immoral. In right. fact, if you're an atheist, you're immoral. I, there's a Julia Sweeney, who's, a, who's another friend of mine. She was in Saturday Night Live, but she's, she's a, a well-known atheist too. But she once said, um, when she first came out to her mother and said she was an atheist, her mother said, oh my God, I can see you not believing in God, but an atheist. Because <laughs> the, no, the in the United States, um, there, were, there was a survey done and the people who were basically most distrusted, below rapist, was atheists. Uh, it, it's, it's this connotation that if you just say, I'm not willing to believe in this invented deity, or I'm not willing to accept the evidence enough to believe in it, even if it's that gentle, you are labeled. Not now you're labeled to be militant, whatever that means, um, if you're o open enough to speak about it. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's sad. So that, but, that, but, but religion you know, has created some rules. It certainly did in early tribes, the Ten Commandments, et cetera, et cetera. And some of them make sense, some of them don't. So the question is, you can't just get rid of religion, or nor is it, I mean, for many people, it, it's a source of great comfort. The idea that they may not, there may be something after their death. I mean, death is, is, a, nat, is a universal human trauma. And that, so, so it provides comfort. And so the question, the idea is not to get rid of these things wholesale, but are there other ways that we could meet fundamental human needs like that? without inventing fake stories that give us false comfort or false distrust or inhibit our, ability, our willingness to take actions on things we should take actions of. And so that seems to me the question. Can you have this kind of social organizations that are much more healthy than religious organizations? Of? And, I, and I don't know the answer to that, but I, I think, um, I think that that's where we should be striving. Okay. And I don't make predictions for something as short as 2,000 years in the future. I like to make predictions for 2 trillion years in the future. Then I'm sure no one will be around to check them. <laughs>